you have your Bibles, please go with me to the book of Acts, the third chapter, and look at verse 19, 20, and 21. It's a very interesting scripture text. It definitely flows in a dispens two dispensations, but yet and still we'll bring it to the present time. Paul mentions that all scripture is given by God for inspiration and is profitable with all. So I'm going to try to extrapolate from this scripture something that we can profit with all with from. Our theme has been for this month, uh, a fresh experience with God. Put that in the atmosphere, a fresh experience with God. And I want to build off of that for this last message. And in Acts again, third chapter, verse 19, I'm going to pick it up from the King James Version. Repent, therefore, and be converted that your sins may be blotted out. One text says wiped out. So the time of refreshments may come from the presence of the Lord and that he may send Jesus Christ whom was preached to you before, whom the heaven must receive until the times of restitution, or restoration, I'm sorry, of all things, which God has spoken by the mouth of his holy prophets since the world began. And all the people said amen. amen. So tracking the fresh experience with God, here is one of of walking into repentance. How many believe that repentance is good? It's good, it's good to repent. It's, it's almost like saying, I'm sorry. How many know it's difficult to say I was wrong? Uh, some of y'all, good for you. When we repent, God promised not only to cleanse us of our sins, but to bring us spiritual refreshment. That's what repentance does. Turning away from the sin may at first seem painful because it is hard to break old habits and give up certain sins. Remember when you got saved and, and you said, Lord, I'll give it all up, but I'm, I got to hang on to this one right here. <laughs> this is so I can go to sleep. <laughs> it's painful, but it must be removed. Amen hard to break old habits, but God will give you a better way and a more refreshing way when you repent, when you turn away from the old habits. Hosea, the sixth chapter, in another text, he talks about the promise here in Hosea 6 and 3. Then shall we know if we follow on to know the Lord has going forth, his going forth is prepared as the morning and he shall come up on us as rain, and the latter and the former rain upon the earth. Hosea is just speaking about a prophetic movement of knowing God is like fresh rain, the former and the latter. In the farmer's field, as they agriculturally went in those days, <clears throat> the former rain came in October uh, over the seeds, and the latter rain came around March and April, causing the grain or the crop to flow and to grow strongly. As we know the Lord, the rain will come and refresh you, and you will have a fresh experience with God and begin to grow. When we grew up in the church, they used to tell us that you need a refilling. You know, you need to go back and, and refresh yourself. Because if you get too stale, you have a form of godliness, but you deny the power. Church becomes so habitual to you and so uh, such a habit, you know how to do it with your eyes closed. But when you go back and get that fresh fire, and that refresh outpouring, it becomes like the former and the latter rains. Amen? Amen? God is showering his faithfulness upon Israel here in this text and letting Israel see that I want to refresh you, but they did not want to come back to him as they were instructed. The problem here is that sin had grabbed them so difficultly hard because they didn't believe Jesus was the Messiah that was to come. So they crucified him and turned away from him. But Peter begins to give clear explanation that this was the Messiah that you guys missed. Nobody else is coming. He is the one. Repent and turn away from the old habits and turn in a 180 degree in a new direction. Rich Evans says it like this. He, he says that the is more important than speed. Mm -hmm. Remember the time that you got lost going down the wrong street, trying to take a shortcut through a neighborhood and realize this neighborhood don't go through? Now you could still be sitting there at the end of that neighborhood, at the end of that block in that cul-de-sac saying, somebody gonna make a road through here. Hey, not. Nah. Because somebody said you have to turn yourself around. 
And that's the way life is sometimes. It'll direct you down a path and you start going down that road and get to the end and says, there's no outlet. Wrong way, dead end. I did that a few days ago. I was trying to make myself a quick get to the church and the traffic was backed up. I said, I'm gonna cut through this neighborhood. And I turned and I got to thinking, I wonder if this is that neighborhood that can go all the way through. And it didn't. And my is so sad and, and frustrated and turned back around and I looked to the left where the light was. We had to go to the right to get back in line. I was further down. Somebody know what I'm talking about. Remember the time you got lost, you do. And you came and you turned around and got back on track. Even when you are going in the wrong direction. If you're connected to the right person, he'll bring you back on track. Because God will bring you back on track. Directions is more important than speed. You can go fast in the wrong directions and with a positive attitude and choose not to turn around. You can walk fast in the wrong direction and realize, like I'm walking across the street in a fast direction, but realizing it's not safe. But if I don't turn around, I'll be going in the head in the wrong direction. It'll take me longer to get back on track. Proverbs 14 and 12 says like this, there is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof is a way of death, Proverbs 14, 12. In other words, the way which seemeth right may often mean options and require a few sacrifice, easy choice. However, this should make us take a second look at the options. It's easier to go in an easy way. Is this solution or this activity because I allow, it allows me to become lazy? If this is the option of the way that seems right? Is it the attitude because, is, it my, is the attitude or actions I wanna take because it, it doesn't cost me anything? I don't have to change anything? Watch it when you get so comfortable in doing your own way. Is it because it requires no moral restraint? that seemeth right to a man. The right choice often requires hard work and self-sacrifice. It's difficult saying, I'm sorry, but after you get over it, you feel much better about it. That's repentance. The lesson here is don't be enticed by the appetite of shortcuts that seems right, but end up dead wrong. Says that to me, there are no, no shortcuts. Life must be lived out. Oh, stop, stop, stop. You're preaching. Life must be lived out, and there are no shortcuts. You can see a couple and get enamored by, oh, oh, mm, they look so perfect. Say it again. There are no shortcuts. If it looks good, and it is good, and it's been good, it's been some work put in. A whole lot of work put in it. Look at somebody say, I worked on this this morning. I worked on this. I didn't just wake up like this. Put some work in. Listen to how Jesus says it quickly in Matthew 7 and 13, 14. Matthew 7, 13, 14. Enter at the straight, enter at the straight gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. And many there be that go therein. I'm reading from the King James, Matthew 7, 13, 14. Because straight is the gate and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. The gateway to eternal life, Jesus says in Matthew, John 10, is him. He said, I am the door. I am the gateway into eternal life. Any man enter in, he shall be saved. The gateway is called the straight gate. It's a narrow gate. This does not mean that it's difficult to become a Christian or to walk or live the Christian life. It's just a narrow way. A narrow way that leads into eternal life, which God himself only can give you the directions on how to go down that road. And many do not want to walk that road, but it's the road we must walk. A fresh experience with God will take you down to the narrow ways, which is God's way. Believe it in Jesus Christ, and he is the only way to heaven because he alone died for our sins and made us right with God. Living this way may not be popular, but it's profitable. 
and it's powerful and it's the right thing to do. Thank God there is a way. Out of many roads that we've gone down and dead ends that we hit, thank God there is a way. And Jesus is the way. Fresh experience with God. Repent, therefore, and be converted that your sins may be blotted out. Acts 3, 19. The time of refreshment will come from the presence of the Lord. And that he may send Jesus Christ, whom was preached to you before. Acts 3, 3, 21. Whom the heavens must receive until the times of restoration of all things which God has spoken by the mouth of the holy prophets since the world began. This historical context here gives us a message of a time of refreshing. God wants to refresh us. And refreshment comes when we repent. It comes when we realize that we missed the mark. It's not about head or feeling sorry or I got called, I'm in trouble. It's something that you do every day. If a man look and does not touch, but think in his heart, he's already committed it. It's already done. If you think evil or something negative in your heart about someone, you've already done it. Don't do it. But inwardly, you've already committed it. Remember the time you told your parents under your breath, I can't stand you. Just a few of y'all. Just a few of y'all. Make me sick. Uh, I don't want to be in this house. I don't want to live here no more. And somehow mother just always said, what you say? <laughs> the times of refreshing will come from a new experience once we repent, literally meaning that we, re you know, we're, repent is mean, we are renewing and reviving and restoring in spirit. You feel refreshed in your spirit. No more stale Christians. It's come to church, oh blah. No, I didn't like the worship songs. I don't know what they were talking about. Or you have to become a worshiper. And that means spirit and truth. Literally means the renewing and reviving and restoring in spirit. Repentance and conversion always brings about refreshment, revival of spirit, and also it brings about maturity. Like other believers, the gospel is so blessed to us. There's a special season where the Holy Spirit ministers grace more abundantly, where you come in and you overflow in the presence of God. It starts with repentance. Changing a mind for a better and a moral point of view. Changing my attitude towards sin. I cannot cover things up that I know that God has already exposed. Missing the mark, falling short of the experience of God, or living outside of God's plan for your life. The lesson here is clearly seen in Jesus who says it here in Luke 13. I want to read this one through five, so let me read it out. It's a lesson that Jesus points out. Watch this little quick parable story. They came to Jesus and said in Luke 13. He said, there were present at the season some that told him of the Galileans whom blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifice. Jesus answered and said unto them, suppose ye that these Galileans were sinners above all Galileans. Because they sacrifice, because their sacrifice is such things. I tell you, nay, but except you repent, or ye repent, you should likewise perish. Or the 18 upon whom the Tower of Siloam fell and slew them. Think that they were more sinners above all men that dwell in Jerusalem. I tell you, no, nay, but except you repent, you should likewise perish. A small uh, parable thought, but the essence here is the principle of you have to make a good choice, plainly putting it, repent or perish. Now, if it's up to me, if it's going to be perish, I'm going to repent. And the decision here is that repent or perish. How many want to perish? Don't raise your hand. Let me say it slow against you. <laughs> How many want to perish? Not many. How many want to repent? Good, 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 good. Not all will change, though. Some will fight against this. They will become very disobedient and hard-headed to the things of God. They become totally adverse and stubborn to the things of God. Are you know any stubborn people <laughs> that it's their way or no way? It's what I see and what I say, and nobody's going to change it. Stubborn leads to hard-headedness. 
It has a mind of its own and a hard head. Y'all trying to preach in the pews. And if you make your bed, yeah. Stubbornness, stubbornness. But when you are converted and you completely move away from, you're completely persuaded that Jesus is the Messiah, then you come into alignment that God is God. He is Lord. And I'm going to change my mind no matter how hard it takes or how, much difficult, how difficult it is. I'm going to trust God and believe God. I'm going to have a heart that's contrite, a contrite heart, feeling of expression of remorse for the sins against God, things against God. Watch what David says. We're coming to the end of this. This repentance message is very hard, but hang on in there. Psalms 51 and 4. David said, against you and you only have I sinned and done this evil in your sight. David realized that it was against God that he had taken this advantage up over uh, Neriah and Gad Bersheba for his wife. But he says you are converted or change of conduct. You have a conversion or change of conduct when you face it and make the change to go in the right and a better direction. Greater things begin to happen in your life because you witness to the fact that I missed it. But nevertheless, I'm not going to give up. I'm going to get up and keep moving my life forward. God here begins to restore now because you come back into the place of receiving the fullness of his blessings. The actions here returning to something, restoration is the action of returning to something that was formerly, formerly your own. God wants to give it back to you. The law of the Lord brings that about in Psalms 19 and 7. It's the word of the Lord that brings about this conversion. Psalms 19 and 7 says the law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. Testimony of the Lord is sure, making the, sim making the wise simple, or making the wise the simpler. You become knowledgeable of God's word, and you're not insensitive to the word of God, so it brings you back in order. Psalms 51, verse 12 and 13. Restore unto me the joy of your salvation then. And uphold me with your generous spirit. David knew that if I can get back to restoration, then I'll have another fresh experience with God. Restore to me the joy, because my joy is gone. I'm a Christian, I believe I go to church, but I have no joy. I have no real peace of happiness. I don't feel the joy that I felt before because I'm hanging on to weights that seemingly I need to rid of. But if I can get back to that place of joy, I don't need a worship team. I know that he could have cut me off a long time ago, but now that I have restoration with God, I don't regulate my happiness and my joy about Jesus with you, because you may not be joyful at all, but my joy is contagious. So I don't sit around like I restored myself. He restored me. So his restoration is full and it also brings about joy. Joy unspeakable and full of glory. Joy that no man can take from you. Joy with lights on in the house. Joy with no lights on in the house. Joy with gas in the car. Joy with no gas in the car. Joy with behind on bills. Joy with all bills paid. Joy with a boo, joy without a boo. I have joy because I have a health in my body and in my mind. Joy unspeakable and full of glory. Anybody got joy? Can somebody how fast that my joy is about to explode? Because the fresh experience with God every time I come to church it's a fresh experience with God if I check the record and look at the demons that I could not see they didn't want me to come to church they didn't want me to be back in the house of the Lord but tell your neighbor since I made it back oh come on here work with me a little bit I think I'll give God a worthy clap and a shout out my mouth because I passed the prison, I passed the jail, I passed the hospital, and I made it to the... David has felt this way 
in 2 Samuel 12 and 7, David felt this as Nathan came and confronted him in 2 Samuel 12 around verse 7, really the 11th and the 12th chapter. And David, as Nathan begins to go through this parable of the story, but he told David, you are the man. You are the one that has done this. And against this, you have done against God. Here's where David says in Psalms 51, then I need God to restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. I've been captured by the enemy again, but I need God to bring back the salvation. The joy of God's salvation is experienced here through the remedy of God, or to the redeem, redemption of God. That's the joy of God's salvation, is the everlasting, overpoweringness of God that brings about this joy of salvation, a fresh experience with God. God wants us to be closer to him, church. He wants us to experience this life and life more abundantly. So therefore, we confess to God. Someone says, well, I don't want to talk to nobody, and I don't know if, if the Catholic priest could help me. And I went in that little box and told him the last time I was, I was sinning, and I did it yesterday. When was your last confession? It was this morning. <laughs> and you took that to a man. Thank God. This is good in some sense. But watch what Psalms 32, verse 5, I think verse 7 says, I confess my transgressions to the Lord. And you, you forgave my iniquities and my sins. It is to God you confess your transgressions and your iniquities. You need to tell him about it. Open your mouth and let him know, God, I have done this. Well, I don't want anybody to know my business. Then God already knows your business. He knew what you were doing before you did it. He saw you when you were on your way to the hookup rendezvous and the deja vu. He understood when you woke up this morning, you had sinning on your mind. You had to live. I got to build my testimony before I get back to church. God knows all about it. So you confess it to him. He'll forgive your iniquities. But this calls every one of us. Everyone, the godly, we pray to God. We pray in times that we need him and we are found of him, that the floodwaters do not overflow us. We come near to him, Psalms 35, and he will hide us in that set secret place. He shall keep us from the places of trouble and God will guide us in the right path that we do not keep doing the same thing over and over again. This is the fresh experience with God. You may still have to face the earthly consequences because I taught, thought that when I got my speeding ticket, the police officer said, I'm just going to write it up, but I'm going to forgive you. He forgave me, but I still had the ticket. So I, <laughs> y'all not working with me this morning. I still had the ticket. And he's like, well, you forgave me. Why well, I got the ticket? He said, well, I had to write it and I can't take it off the paper because there is a, 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 another part of the ticket here that's already showed that it's in my book that I wrote you the ticket. I said, well, can't you just get rid of the, the carbon copies? I can't get rid of the carbon copy because I got to give an account for everyone that I got in the book. Don't look at me like that, Ramon. Got to get an account for everyone that's in the book. Police officer. Exp so I said, well, look, could you just go and just tear it up? Can I just tear it? He said, you tear it up, but it's already on record. It's already gone downtown. I got your license plates. It's already there. But you forgave me. Yeah, I forgave you, but you got to deal with the consequences. You got to pay that ticket. And you had to. <laughs> We're all in these natural bodies, and these natural bodies go through sinful things, it goes through spiritual things. David knew this about his experience with, with Neriah when he wanted to go after Bathsheba. But after God told David, Listen, here is the consequences. I'm not going to let the baby live because the baby would become a, 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 a um, what's the word? It would become an, a, an, an instrument. It becomes a, a, a reproach. There it is against Israel when David had the baby with Bathsheba and that baby died. Bathsheba and David mourned over that child. And God says, But nevertheless, I've not forgotten about you, David. Once you repented and came back to you, you're going to have another child and that child's going to be named Solomon. And Solomon means peace. When you repent and comes back to God, he might move something out your life, but he'll bring you back some peace and joy. Joy. Get somebody high five. Tell them I got some peace and joy coming. I may have lost something that I really loved, but I got something better coming. I need five people that know that you got something better coming. Say, I got something better coming. Today I prophesy and I decree and declare that God is bringing back your joy. He's bringing back your peace. He's bringing back your hope. He's bringing back your experience. He's bringing back a fresh experience. The enemy thought it was over for you. It was done for you. It was out for the last count. But you know how to get back to God. If you could push somebody's shoulder, tell them I know how to get back to God. I, I know how to get back to God. I may look crazy, but I'm going to get back to God. I might have to crawl and cry, but I'm going to get back to God. If that's my way out of this, I'm getting 
back to God. You can't help me out no way. I'm going to get back to God. He's about to restore my joy. And the joy that I have, I'm going to have forever. Getting back to God is an experience. Getting back to God is like a prodigal coming home. Getting back to God is like crawling with the issue of blood. Getting back to God is like going through a storm, wind, water, and rain. But you get to your destination. Getting back to God is a joy, is ignoring all the negative and get to the positive. Getting back to God is understanding that's my place of peace. Getting back to God is not something that you play around with. It becomes your everyday intention. It becomes your everyday effort. It becomes everything about you. If nothing else, I want to get back to God. I may not get another house. I may not get another car I may not get another 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 but if I get back to God everything I need God's got it for me someone say get back to God a fresh experience with God it's not over just turn around and go in a better direction not 360 but 180 i gotta turn around and turn my back on some things and move away from some things raise your right hand say i'm not perfect but i'm purposeful i want to do what god wants me to do i want to be who god wants me to be i want to go where god wants me to go I want to operate in the power of the Holy Ghost the devil knows I got his number he shouldn't have tried it at my house because in my house is power of the Holy Ghost God is bringing me back I wish I could talk to somebody here I'm about to get my praise back, my dance back, my health back, my peace back. If you could, shake one neighbor's hand and say, neighbor, restoration is coming to your house. All that money, the devil messed up, you about to get it all back. Yeah. Yes, sir. It's coming like the dew in the morning. Former and ladder. I'm about to drop it on you like you never had before. You didn't go through this test to not be proven and blessed. This is your season of abundance, of fresh Rebo Shataba. Hey, a fresh experience. Tell your neighbor, watch God. Watch God. Be God in my life. Watch him. Do it again. I'm about to get it up. Come on, rest on your feet. Encourage one person with this note. Tell them the devil should have took you all the way out. But he didn't. Oh, what a mistake. Now you back. And you know what you went through. Your praise is going to another. Let me read the scripture and I'm close. I promise you, Isaiah 35, 10. And the ransom of the Lord shall return. Isaiah 35, 10, a fresh experience with God. The ransom of the Lord will return and come to Zion, Zion, Jerusalem church with singing and everlasting joy 
on their heads. They shall obtain joy and gladness and sorrow and sighing shall be, shall flee away or be no more. So when you came in this morning, you had been ransomed by God. Because the enemy wanted to take you out. So you came in Zion, singing. Nobody know what you're singing about, but you know, he brought me out. <laughs> And you have this everlasting joy on your head and that joy brings more joy and gladness you should not leave church like this it embarrasses God it's a bad reputation for us like where you been church You should be going to your car with gas in it and electrical power. Walk into your house in an apartment. Go to your refrigerator, Shande Lilobusa. Everything about you should praise God, not for the things, but for him that gave you the things. Amen. Sorrow and sighing shall flee away before you complain about it praise about it come on give God a praise God bless you Put your hands up father we bless you for this word this morning we thank you for those that are listening under the sound of my voice and those that are on the airways we understand our particular place you know me better than anyone my down sittings and my uprising and the way I would take you know all my shortcomings all my flaws and all even when I was foolish you were faithful and I thank you for that I've escaped like the bird from the snare of the fowler help me not to be trapped and entangled again but to live out the rest of my life to the glory of God Father, I'm going to quit dodging the bullet and I'm going to get married. We've been together for 15 years. And I'm going to go ahead and do this thing right. Keep praying, keep your heads bowed, keep praying. Because I know it's the right thing to do. We got a whole family here. Four children going for five. I need to go ahead and do this right can't call my mother up because she's in heaven but I'm going to go in and forgive her and forgive myself or if I did call her I would call her up I'm going to call go right by that job that I stormed out and wasn't speaking in tongues when I left I tell them I'm sorry because none of the checks they gave me bounced I could have been a better employee Father, this morning was anything that I'm unaware of that I've come short of. Like at the intersection, blowing the horn at somebody, mad as I can be, it's angry, and the light's red. Father, I pray <laughs> that you help my attitude on everything about me in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs>